Book of Revelation, Wikipedia article audio The Book of Revelation, often called the Revelation to John, the Apocalypse of John, the Revelation, or simply Revelation or Apocalypse, is a book of the New Testament that occupies a central place in Christian eschatology. Its title is derived from the first word of the text, written in Koine Greek, Apokalesis, meaning unveiling or revelation. The book of Revelation is the only apocalyptic document in the New Testament canon. The author names himself in the text as John, but his precise identity remains a point of academic debate. Second century Christian writers such as Justin Martyr, Irenaeus, Melito the Bishop of Sardis, and Clement of Alexandria and the author of the Muratorian Fragment identify John the Apostle as the John of Revelation. Modern scholarship generally takes a different view, and many consider that nothing can be known about the author except that he was a Christian prophet. Some modern scholars characterize Revelation's author as a putative figure whom they call John of Patmos. The bulk of traditional sources date the book to the reign of the Emperor Domitian, and the evidence tends to confirm this. Composition and Setting Title, Authorship, and Date The book spans three literary genres, the epistolary, the apocalyptic, and the prophetic. It begins with John, on the island of Patmos in the Aegean, addressing a letter to the seven churches of Asia. He then describes a series of prophetic visions, including figures such as the Whore of Babylon and the Beast, culminating in the second coming of Jesus. The obscure and extravagant imagery has led to a wide variety of Christian interpretations, historicist interpretations see in Revelation a broad view of history, Pret-wrist interpretations treat Revelation as mostly referring to the events of the Apostolic Era, or, at the latest, the fall of the Roman Empire. Futurists believe that Revelation describes future events, and idealist or symbolic interpretations consider that Revelation does not refer to actual people or events, but is an allegory of the spiritual path and the ongoing struggle between good and evil. The title is taken from the first word of the book in Koine Greek, Pi Omicron Kappa Lambda Upsilon Psi Iota Apokalesis, which means unveiling or revelation. The author names himself as John, but it is currently considered unlikely that the author of Revelation was also the author of the Gospel of John. Some of the evidence for this was set out as early as the second half of the 3rd century by Pope Dionysius of Alexandria, who noted that the Gospel and the Epistles attributed to John, unlike Revelation, do not name their author, and that the Greek of the Gospel is correct and elegant while that of Revelation is neither. Some later scholars believe that the two books also have radical differences in theological perspective. Tradition links him to John the Apostle, but it is unlikely that the Apostle could have lived into the most likely time for the book's composition, the reign of Domitian, and the author never states that he knew Jesus. All that is known is that this John was a Jewish Christian prophet, probably belonging to a group of such prophets, and was accepted as such by the congregations to whom he addresses his letter. His precise identity remains unknown, and modern scholarship commonly refers to him as John of Patmos. Early church tradition dates the book to end of the Emperor Domitian, and most modern scholars agree, although the author may have written a first version after Nero's great fire in Rome under Vespasian and updated it under Domitian. The beast with seven heads and the number 666 seem to allude directly to the Emperor Nero, but this does not require that Revelation was written in the 60s, as there was a widespread belief in later decades that Nero would return. Genre In her volume in the original Anchor Bible, 
J. Massingbird Ford argues that the core of Revelation, chapters 4 to 11, was written by John the Baptist and later surrounded with a Christian beginning and ending, although this view is not held by the large majority of scholars. 70 AD is the likely date of writing according to Martha Himmelfarb in the recently published Blackwell series. Revelation is an apocalyptic prophecy with an epistolary introduction addressed to seven churches in the Roman province of Asia. Apocalypse means the revealing of divine mysteries, John is to write down what is revealed and send it to the seven churches. The entire book constitutes the letter The letters to the seven individual churches are introductions to the rest of the book, which is addressed to all seven. While the dominant genre is apocalyptic, the author sees himself as a Christian prophet, Revelation uses the word in various forms 21 times, more than any other New Testament book. Sources The predominant view is that Revelation alludes to the Old Testament although it is difficult among scholars to agree on the exact number of allusions or the allusions themselves. Revelation rarely quotes directly from the Old Testament, yet almost every verse alludes to or echoes older scriptures. Over half of the references stem from Daniel, Ezekiel, Psalms, and Isaiah, with Daniel providing the largest number in proportion to length and Ezekiel standing out as the most influential. Because these references appear as allusions rather than as quotes, it is difficult to know whether the author used the Hebrew or the Greek version of the Hebrew scriptures, but he was clearly often influenced by the Greek. He very frequently combines multiple references, and again the illusional style makes it impossible to be certain to what extent he did so consciously. According to several studies including a review by Dr. James Tabor and Dr. J. Massingbird Ford, the Book of Revelation contains ancient pre-Christian texts of Jewish origin dating back to the time of John the Baptist and the communities of Qumran as well as antique Jewish texts. In several verses one can identify the ancient texts and that attributed to John, the latter having just added in the original text the words Jesus Christ, testimony of Jesus Christ or even Jesus and similar words in dozens of other verses. Conventional understanding until recently was that Revelation was written to comfort beleaguered Christians as they underwent persecution at the hands of a megalomaniacal Roman emperor, but much of this has now been jettisoned, Domitian is no longer viewed as a despot imposing an imperial cult, and it is no longer believed that there was any systematic empire-wide persecution of Christians in his time. Setting The current view is that Revelation was composed in the context of a conflict within the Christian community of Asia Minor over whether to engage with, or withdraw from, the far larger non-Christian community. Revelation chastises those Christians who wanted to reach an accommodation with the Roman cult of empire. This is not to say that Christians in Roman Asia were not suffering, for withdrawal from, and defiance against, the wider Roman society, which imposed very real penalties, Revelation offered a victory over this reality by offering an apocalyptic hope, in the words of Professor Adela Yarbrough Collins what ought to be was experienced as a present reality. Canonical History Revelation was the last book accepted into the Christian biblical canon, and to the present day some churches that derive from the Church of the East reject it. Eastern Christians became skeptical of the book as doubts concerning its authorship and unusual style were reinforced by aversion to its acceptance by Montanists and other groups considered to be heretical. This distrust of the Book of Revelation persisted in the East through the 15th century. Synods Dionysius, Bishop of Alexandria 
disciple of Origen wrote that the book of Revelation could have been written by Cyrinthus although he himself did not adopt the view that Cyrinthus was the writer. He regarded the Apocalypse as the work of an inspired man but not of an apostle. Eusebius, in his church history mentioned that the Apocalypse of John was accepted as a canonical book and rejected at the same time. Protestant Reformation The Apocalypse of John, also called Revelation, is counted as both accepted and disputed, which has caused some confusion over what exactly Eusebius meant by doing so. The disputation perhaps attributed to Origen. Origen seems having accepted it in his writings. Cyril of Jerusalem does not name it among the canonical books. Athanasius in his letter 39, Augustine of Hippo in his book on Christian doctrine, Tyrannius Rufinus in his commentary on the Apostles' Creed, Pope Innocent I in a letter to the Bishop of Toulouse and John of Damascus in his work An Exposition of the Orthodox Faith listed the revelation of John the Evangelist as a canonical book. The Council of Laodicea omits it as a canonical book. The Decretum Gelasianum, which is a work written by an anonymous scholar between 519 and 553, contains a list of books of scripture presented as having been reckoned as canonical by the Council of Rome. This list mentions it as a part of the New Testament canon. Texts and Manuscripts the Synod of Hippo, followed by the Council of Carthage and the Council of Carthage, classified it as a canonical book. Structure and Content The Apostolic Canons, approved by the Eastern Orthodox Council in Trullo in 692, omit it. Historicism, which sees in Revelation a broad view of history, preterism, in which Revelation mostly refers to the events of the Apostolic Era or, at the latest, the fall of the Roman Empire, Amillennialism, which contends that the millennium has already begun and is identical with the current Church Age, Futurism, which believes that Revelation describes future events, and, Idealism slash Allegoricalism, which holds that Revelation does not refer to actual people or events, but is an allegory of the spiritual path and the ongoing struggle between good and evil. Doubts resurfaced during the Protestant Reformation. Martin Luther called it neither apostolic nor prophetic in the 1522 preface to his translation of the New Testament, and it was the only New Testament book on which John Calvin did not write a commentary. As of 2015 it remains the only New Testament work not read in the Divine Liturgy of the Eastern Orthodox Church, though Catholic and Protestant liturgies include it. There are approximately 300 Greek manuscripts of Revelation. While the Codex Vaticanus does not include it, the other major manuscripts that do are the Codex Sinaiticus, Codex Alexandrinus, and Codex Ephremi Rescriptus. In addition, there are numerous papyri, especially that of P47, the minuscules, plus fragmentary quotations in the Church Fathers of the 2nd to 5th centuries and the 6th century Greek commentary on Revelation by Andreas. Divisions in the book seem to be marked by the repetition of key phrases, by the arrangement of subject matter into blocks, and around its Christological passages, and much use is made of significant numbers, especially the number seven, which represented perfection according to ancient numerology. Nevertheless, there is a complete lack of consensus among scholars about the structure of Revelation. The following is therefore an outline of the book's contents rather than of its structure. Literary Structure Outline Interpretations Eschatological 
Revelation has a wide variety of interpretations, ranging from the simple message that we should have faith that God will prevail, to complex end-time scenarios, to the views of critics who deny any spiritual value to Revelation at all. Most Christian interpretations fall into one or more of the following categories. Abdu'l Baha has given some interpretations about the 11th and 12th chapters of Revelation in some answered questions. The 1260 days spoken of in the forms, 1260 days, 42 months refers to the 1,260 years in the Islamic calendar. The two witnesses spoken of are Muhammad and Ali. Also, the Bible reads, And there appeared a great wonder in heaven, and behold a great red dragon, having seven heads and ten horns, and seven crowns upon his heads. The seven heads of the dragon are symbolic of the seven provinces dominated by the Umayyads, Damascus, Persia, Arabia, Egypt, Africa, Andalusia, and Transoxania. The ten horns represent the ten names of the leaders of the Umayyad dynasty, Abu Sufyan, Muawiyah, Yazid, Marwan, Abd al-Malik, Walid, Sulaiman, Umar. Hisham, and Ibrahim. Some names were reused, as in the case of Yazid II and Yazid III and the like, which were not counted for this interpretation. Eastern Orthodoxy treats the text as simultaneously describing contemporaneous events and as prophecy of events to come, for which the contemporaneous events were a form of foreshadow. It rejects attempts to determine, before the fact, if the events of Revelation are occurring by mapping them onto present-day events, taking to heart the scriptural warning against those who proclaim he is here. Prematurely. Instead, the book is seen as a warning to be spiritually and morally ready for the end times, whenever they may come, but they will come at the time of God's choosing not something that can be precipitated nor trivially deduced by mortals. This view is also held by many Catholics, although there is a diversity of opinion about the nature of the apocalypse within Catholicism. Book of Revelation is the only book of the New Testament that is not read during services by the Byzantine Rite churches although in the Western Rite Orthodox parishes, which are under the same bishops as the Byzantine Rite, it is read. Christian Gnostics, however, are unlikely to be attracted to the teaching of Revelation because the doctrine of salvation through the sacrificed Lamb, which is central to Revelation, is repugnant to Gnostics. Christian Gnostics believed in the forgiveness of sins, but in no vicarious sacrifice for sin, they accepted Christ in the full realization of the Word, his life, not his death, was the keynote of their doctrine and their practice. James Morgan Price was an esoteric Gnostic who saw Revelation as a Western version of the Hindu theory of the Chakra. He began his work, The purpose of this book is to show that the Apocalypse is a manual of spiritual development and not, as conventionally interpreted, a cryptic history or prophecy. Such diverse theories have failed to command widespread acceptance. But Christopher Rowland argues, there are always going to be loose threads which refuse to be woven into the fabric as a whole. The presence of the threads which stubbornly refuse to be incorporated into the neat tapestry of our world view does not usually totally undermine that view. Baha'i Faith the Book of Mormon affirms that John the Apostle is the author of Revelation and that he was foreordained by God to write it. Latter-day Revelation through the Prophet Joseph Smith contained in the Doctrine and Covenants, Section 77, postulates answers to specific questions regarding the symbolism contained in the Book of Revelation. Topics include, The Sea of Glass, the four beasts and their appearance, 
the twenty-four elders, the book with seven seals, certain angels, the sealing of the one hundred and forty-four thousand, the little book eaten by John, and the two witnesses in chapter eleven. Latter-day Saints believe that the warning contained in Revelation 22,18-19 does not refer to the biblical canon as a whole. Rather, an open and ongoing dialogue between God and the modern-day prophet and apostles of the LDS faith constitute an open canon of scripture. Eastern Orthodox Esoteric Latter-day Saints in the Coptic Orthodox Church the whole book of Revelation is read during Apocalypse Night or Bright Saturday. This interpretation, which has found expression among both Catholic and Protestant theologians, considers the liturgical worship, particularly the Easter rites, of early Christianity as background and context for understanding the book of Revelation's structure and significance. This perspective is explained in the Paschal Liturgy and the Apocalypse by Massey H. Shepherd, an Episcopal scholar, and in Scott Hahn S. The Lamb's Supper, The Mass is Heaven on Earth, in which he states that revelation in form is structured after creation, fall, judgment, and redemption. Those who hold this view say that the Temple's destruction had a profound effect on the Jewish people not only in Jerusalem but among the Greek-speaking Jews of the Mediterranean. They believe the book of Revelation provides insight into the early Eucharist, saying that it is the new temple worship in the new heaven and earth. The idea of the Eucharist as a foretaste of the heavenly banquet is also explored by British Methodist Geoffrey Wainwright in his book Eucharist and Eschatology. According to Pope Benedict XVI some of the images of Revelation should be understood in the context of the dramatic suffering and persecution of the churches of Asia in the first century. Accordingly, the book of Revelation should not be read as an enigmatic warning, but as an encouraging vision of Christ's definitive victory over evil. The Radical Discipleship Interpretation asserts that the Book of Revelation is best understood as a handbook for radical discipleship, i.e., how to remain faithful to the spirit and teachings of Jesus and avoid simply assimilating to surrounding society. In this interpretation the primary agenda of the book is to expose as impostors the worldly powers that seek to oppose the ways of God and God's kingdom. The chief temptation for Christians in the first century, and today, is to fail to hold fast to the nonviolent teachings and example of Jesus and instead be lured into unquestioning adoption and assimilation of worldly, national, or cultural values imperialism, nationalism, and civil religion being the most dangerous and insidious. Oriental Orthodox this perspective draws on the approach of Bible scholars such as Chade Myers, William Stringfellow, Richard Horsley, Daniel Berrigan, Wes Howard Brook, and Jörg Rieger. Various Christian anarchists, such as Jacques Ellul, have identified the state and political power as the beast. Adventists maintain a historicist interpretation of the Bible's predictions of the apocalypse. Seventh-day Adventists believe the book of Revelation is especially relevant to believers in the days preceding the second coming of Jesus Christ. The universal church is composed of all who truly believe in Christ, but in the last days, a time of widespread apostasy, a remnant has been called out to keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus. Here is the patience of the saints. Here are those who keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus. As participatory agents in the work of salvation for all humankind, this remnant announces the arrival of the judgment hour, proclaims salvation through Christ, and heralds the approach of his second advent. Many literary writers and theorists have contributed to a wide range of theories about the origins and purpose of the Book of Revelation. 
Some of these writers have no connection with established Christian faiths but, nevertheless, found in Revelation a source of inspiration. Revelation has been approached from Hindu philosophy and Jewish Midrash. Others have pointed to aspects of composition which have been ignored such as the similarities of prophetic inspiration to modern poetic inspiration, or the parallels with Greek drama. In recent years, theories have arisen which concentrate upon how readers and texts interact to create meaning and which are less interested in what the original author intended. Charles Cutler Torrey taught Semitic languages at Yale University. His lasting contribution has been to show how much more meaningful prophets, such as the scribe of Revelation, are when treated as poets first and foremost. He thought this was a point often lost sight of because most English Bibles render everything in prose. Poetry was also the reason John never directly quoted the older prophets. Had he done so, he would have had to use their poetry whereas he wanted to write his own. Tori insisted Revelation had originally been written in Aramaic. This was why the surviving Greek translation was written in such a strange idiom. It was a literal translation that had to comply with the warning at Revelation 22.18 that the text must not be corrupted in any way. According to Tori, the story is that the fourth gospel was brought to Ephesus by a Christian fugitive from Palestine soon after the middle of the first century. It was written in Aramaic. Later, the Ephesians claimed this fugitive had actually been the beloved disciple himself. Subsequently, this John was banished by Nero and died on Patmos after writing Revelation. Tori argued that until AD 80, when Christians were expelled from the synagogues, the Christian message was always first heard in the synagogue and, for cultural reasons, the evangelist would have spoken in Aramaic else he would have had no hearing. Tori showed how the three major songs in Revelation each fall naturally into four regular metrical lines plus a coda. Other dramatic moments in Revelation, such as 616 where the terrified people cry out to be hidden, behave in a similar way. Christina Rossetti was a Victorian poet who believed the sensual excitement of the natural world found its meaningful purpose in death and in God. Her The Face of the Deep is a meditation upon the apocalypse. In her view, what Revelation has to teach is patience. Patience is the closest to perfection the human condition allows. Her book, which is largely written in prose, frequently breaks into poetry or jubilation, much like Revelation itself. The relevance of John's visions belongs to Christians of all times as a continuous present meditation. Such matters are eternal and outside of normal human reckoning. That winter which will be the death of time has no promise of termination. Winter that returns not to spring. Who can bear it? She dealt deftly with the vengeful aspects of John's message. A few are charged to do judgment, everyone without exception is charged to show mercy. Her conclusion is that Christians should see John as representative of all his brethren so they should hope as he hoped, love as he loved. Recently, aesthetic and literary modes of interpretation have developed which focus on revelation as a work of art and imagination, viewing the imagery as symbolic depictions of timeless truths and the victory of good over evil. Elizabeth Schussler Fiorenza wrote Revelation, Vision of a Just World from the Viewpoint of Rhetoric. Accordingly, Revelation's meaning is partially determined by the way John goes about saying things, partially by the context in which readers receive the message and partially by its appeal to something beyond logic. Professor Schussler Fiorenza believes that Revelation has particular relevance today as a liberating message to disadvantaged groups.
John's book is a vision of a just world, not a vengeful threat of world destruction. Her view that Revelation's message is not gender-based has caused dissent. She says we are to look behind the symbols rather than make a fetish out of them. In contrast, Tina Pippin states that John writes horror literature and the misogyny which underlies the narrative is extreme. D. H. Lawrence took an opposing, pessimistic view of Revelation in the final book he wrote, Apocalypse. He saw the language which Revelation used as being bleak and destructive, a death product. Instead, he wanted to champion a public-spirited individualism against its two natural enemies. One of these he called the sovereignty of the intellect which he saw in a technology-based totalitarian society. The other enemy he styled vulgarity and that was what he found in Revelation. It is very nice if you are poor and not humble, to bring your enemies down to utter destruction, while you yourself rise up to grandeur. And nowhere does this happen so splendiferously than in Revelation. Paschal Liturgical Radical Discipleship His specific aesthetic objections to Revelation were that its imagery was unnatural and that phrases like the wrath of the Lamb were ridiculous. He saw Revelation as comprising two discordant halves. In the first, there was a scheme of cosmic renewal in great Chaldean sky spaces, which he quite liked. After that, Lawrence thought, the book became preoccupied with the birth of the baby Messiah and flamboyant hate and simple lust, for the end of the world. Lawrence coined the term Patmosers to describe those Christians who could only be happy in paradise if they knew their enemies were suffering in hell. Modern biblical scholarship attempts to understand Revelation in its first-century historical context within the genre of Jewish and Christian apocalyptic literature. This approach considers the text as an address to seven historical communities in Asia Minor. Under this interpretation, assertions that the time is near are to be taken literally by those communities. Consequently, the work is viewed as a warning to not conform to contemporary Greco-Roman society which John unveils as beastly, demonic, and subject to divine judgment. There is further information on these topics in the entries on higher criticism in apocalyptic literature. Seventh-day Adventist Although the acceptance of revelation into the canon has from the beginning been controversial, it has been essentially similar to the career of other texts. The eventual exclusion of other contemporary apocalyptic literature from the canon may throw light on the unfolding historical processes of what was officially considered orthodox, what was heterodox, and what was even heretical. Interpretation of meanings and imagery are anchored in what the historical author intended and what his contemporary audience inferred a message to Christians not to assimilate into the Roman imperial culture was John's central message. Thus, his letter is pastoral in nature, and the symbolism of Revelation is to be understood entirely within its historical, literary, and social context. Critics study the conventions of apocalyptic literature and events of the first century to make sense of what the author may have intended. Aesthetic and Literary Academic Old Testament Origins Figures in Revelation Notes Bibliography Scholar Barbara Whitlock pointed out a similarity between the consistent destruction of thirds depicted in the Book of Revelation and the Iranian mythology evil characters Ahake or Dag, depicted in the Avesta the earliest religious texts of Zoroastrianism. Dag is mentioned as wreaking much evil in the world until at last chained up and imprisoned on the mythical M.T. Damvond. The Middle Persian sources prophesy that at the end of the world, 
Dag will at last burst his bonds and ravage the world, consuming one in three humans and livestock, until the ancient hero Kirzis returns to life to kill Dag. Whitlock wrote, Zoroastrianism, the state religion of the Roman Empire's main rival, was part of the intellectual milieu in which Christianity came into being, just as were Judaism, the Greek-Roman religion, and the worship of Isis and Mithras. A Zoroastrian influence is completely plausible. Much of Revelation employs ancient sources, primarily but not exclusively the Old Testament. For example, Howard Brooke and Gwyther regard the Book of Enoch as an equally significant but contextually different source. Enoch's journey has no close parallel in the Hebrew Scriptures. Revelation, in one section, forms an inverted parallel with the Book of Enoch in which 1N100,1-3 has a river of blood deep enough to submerge a chariot and in Rev 14.20 has a river of blood up to the horse's bridle. There is an angel ascending in both accounts and both accounts have three messages. Academics showed little interest in this topic until recently. This was not, however, the case with popular writers from nonconforming backgrounds, who interspersed the text of Revelation with the prophecy they thought was being promised. For example, an anonymous Scottish commentary of 1871 prefaces Revelation 4 with the little apocalypse of Mark 13, places Malachi 4,5 within Revelation 11 and writes Revelation 12,7 side by side with the role of the Satan in the book of Job. The message is that everything in Revelation will happen in its previously appointed time. Steve Moyes uses the index of the United Bible Society's Greek New Testament to show that Revelation contains more Old Testament allusions than any other New Testament book but it does not record a single quotation. Perhaps significantly, Revelation chooses different sources than other New Testament books. Revelation concentrates on Isaiah, Psalms, and Ezekiel, while neglecting, comparatively speaking, the books of the Pentateuch that are the dominant sources for other New Testament writers. Methodological objections have been made to this course as each allusion may not have an equal significance. To counter this, G. K. Bale sought to develop a system that distinguished clear, probable, and possible allusions. A clear allusion is one with almost the same wording as its source, the same general meaning, and which could not reasonably have been drawn from elsewhere. A probable allusion contains an idea which is uniquely traceable to its source. Possible allusions are described as mere echoes of their putative sources. Yet, with Revelation, the problems might be judged more fundamental. The author seems to be using his sources in a completely different way to the originals. For example, he borrows the new temple imagery of Ezekiel 40:48, but uses it to describe a new Jerusalem which, quite pointedly, no longer needs a temple because it is God's dwelling. Ian Boxall writes that Revelation is no montage of biblical quotations but a wealth of allusions and evocations rewoven into something new and creative. In trying to identify this something new, Boxall argues that Ezekiel provides the backbone for Revelation. He sets out a comparative table listing the chapters of Revelation in sequence and linking most of them to the structurally corresponding chapter in Ezekiel. The interesting point is that the order is not the same. John, on this theory, rearranges Ezekiel to suit his own purposes. Some commentators argue that it is these purposes and not the structure that really matter. G. K. Bale believes that, however much John makes use of Ezekiel, his ultimate purpose is to present Revelation as a fulfillment of Daniel 7. One theory, Revelation Draft Hypothesis, 
sees the book of Revelation constructed by forming parallels with several texts in the Old Testament such as Ezekiel, Isaiah, Zechariah, Deuteronomy, Joshua, Exodus, and Daniel. For example, Ezekiel's encounter with God is in reverse order as John's encounter with God, both accounts have an expanse before the throne. The chariot's horses in Zechariah's are the same colors as the four horses in Revelation. The nesting of the seven marches around Jericho by Joshua is reenacted by Jesus nesting the seven trumpets within the seventh seal. The description of the beast in Revelation is taken directly out of Daniel. The method that John used allowed him to use the Hebrew scriptures as the source and also use basic techniques of parallel formation, thereby alluding to the Hebrew scriptures. In order of appearance